Today's knockout here in San Jose, California, speaking with the man who runs the show here at Bellator MMA, Mr. Scott Coker. We're about 48 hours away from what could potentially be the biggest show in the history of the promotion. Can you just talk about what's going through your head right now? Well, I'm excited to be back in San Jose and throwing the fight here in the uh, SAP Center. Um, people know this is Strike Force, the home of Strike Force, and Frank Shamrock, who's, who's over here, and Kung Lee, and Josh Thompson, and Gilbert Melendez, and you know the list goes on and on. Daniel Cormier, Luke Rockhold. I mean, they all fought here, and uh, you know I'm promoted here in about five years. So to come back and be in the promotion business with Bellator and Spike on uh, Spike TV. Uh, man, it's just a real honor, and I think that the Bay Area is going to get a great treat on Saturday night to be able to come down and watch the show. The show's going to be amazing, and as far as production, I, th there's no league that does the production better than the, than the production you'll see here on Saturday night. And I know about a month ago you had talked about how uh, you were expecting about 13,000 people to show up for the event. Is that something that's still... Uh is, are you guys consistently moving toward that? Is that something that's going to happen, do you think? Yeah, we've just opened up some more sections. So the, at the end, what the bottom line number was, I'm not sure. But um, I was a little bit mistaken because they told me if the show sells out the way we're seated right now and open up every section in the building, because we can't open up behind the stage because the stage, you know, is, it's only 12,500. So 13 might have been a little bit aggressive, but I'm, I'm shooting for 12, 13,000 12, or 12,500. That's really my goal. And I know a lot of people um, who are familiar with you know with the industry are pretty curious to see how this is going to turn out. You know, you have the kickboxing next to the MMA ring. There's a lot of stuff that you have the four-man um, one-night tournament going on as well. Um, are you are you curious to see how it's going to turn out as well, or are you confident that it's going to be a good show? Well, you know what? When I look at the format, I like it. I like having the ring in the cage here. I think uh, we we set it up about four months ago just to see, see the sight lines and everything. So I like it, but. Really, it's going to be up to the fighters, and are we going to have great fights? If we have great fights, it's going to be a great night of entertainment, you know, and hopefully we'll have great ratings too. Um, but um, the fights, that's going to be up to the guys, you know, here in the room. So, uh, you know, I think matchup-wise, we should have some amazing matchups and some great action. But um, that's going to be up to them, and, and hopefully we'll have some great fights, and we'll deliver on all fronts. And I know, I think it was yesterday, that Liam McGeary had mentioned that he didn't want um, Phil Davis to win the tournament because, you know, he's an ex-UFC fighter, and he kind of complained about Tito as well, getting the title shot so soon. I mean, what do, you, what do you make of all that? I mean, do you think they do have the right to come in and kind of just, you know, request fights on demand, or do they have to work their way up? How do you see all that? Well, I mean, you know, Tito's already done it all, right? Come on, the guy has been underestimated for the last, you know, I don't know, 10 years probably of his career. And there's how many fights has he been in where they said, oh, he'll never win this fight or he'll never win that fight. And he comes back and wins. Um, so to me, he needed this mountain to climb. And, man, when Tito Ortiz wants to fight for your belt, you know, what, that's, a, that's a great day. And for Liam, you know, he was like, you know, this is, this is my belt. I'm going to show the world that, you know, we're going to beat, you know, his ass or beat, beat – be, I don't want to say the UFC's ass or whatever, but he looks at it like this is personal to him. He doesn't he doesn't think Phil Davis should have a title shot. But you know what? Phil's a Bellator fighter. Yeah. That's how I look at it. And if he wins the tournament, he will get a shot at the winner of those two. And so to me, it has nothing to do with really with any other league. It just has to do with our own league. And if you look at our 205 pound weight class, I think it's really strong and it's growing, and we're going to continue to grow it. So. Who knows about the fights we'll have in six months or eight months from now? Because every time you have a fight like this, you just kind of, I, I call it reshuffling the deck. So that's kind of what, what, what you'll see. And as far as the tournament is concerned, I know there was a lot of people who were kind of concerned about, you know, a, a four-man, one-night tournament, this day and age at least, you know, after, after the Pride days. Was there any apprehension on your part to kind of set that up, knowing that it could, you know, fall apart if one guy gets injured or, or if one guy's too tired to go through with it? I mean, is it... Were there any apprehensions that you're on your end? Well, you know, I mean, um, I grew up competing in martial arts tournaments, right? I grew up watching martial arts tournaments. I grew up working for K1, which was the greatest tournament platform for kickboxing. And then I watched Pride, you know, mature. So you have, we have the experience of putting these tournaments together. And a four-man tournament, I think, is doable. An eight-man tournament would have been really, really tough for them to continue on. I mean, MMA started with... with in America with the UFC doing an eight-man tournament. Um, so we've thrown the female tournament all in one night before. We threw a middleweight tournament all in one night. We did a heavyweight tournament over a period of time. I just think that it's much better just to do it all in one night. Do a four-man tournament, four-female four, you know, tournament all in one night, 
and you get to crown the winner that night. And I just think that's that's the way to, that's the format that I like watching. And I have to ask, I'm, I'm very sure you're familiar with Nick Diaz and his situation right now. A very unfortunate situation, according to many. Um, you have a pretty close relationship, or you used to have a pretty close relationship with Nick, having you know worked with him in Strike Force. Can you just talk about? I mean, do you, do you have any thoughts on that on, on his situation? Well, you know what, it's um, it's an unfortunate situation. I think that you know Nevada State has rules and regulations. You know they have to abide by, and um, it's just you know when I look at this all the way around, it's just it's just you know it's just it's just a bad situation. And uh, you know I feel for Nick. Five years is a long time, but um, it's. Like I said, there's rules and regulations to abide by. And, man, but, you know, again, five years is a long time. So, you know, it could be the end of his career. Let's face it. You know, this could be the end of Dick Diaz. But I think that uh, he's going to appeal. And let's see what happens. I'm not sure, you know, if he's, you know, has a legal team or not. But I think that he's going to probably move in that direction. And let's see what the outcome is. So, you know, hopefully we'll see him back in the cage, you know, sooner than five years. And uh, does that... That ruling against Nick Diaz does that make you any, like apprehensive in any sort of way to to hold to host an event in Nevada in future no, no, events? No, no, not at all, not at all. That's that's just a uh, that's a that's a fighter commission situation. That has nothing to do with the promoter and the the you know the athletic commission. We have good relationship with athletic commissions across the country, so that has nothing to do with us.